It's Pete and Patty's powerful particular podcast. It's episode three, and it, this episode is called Imagination Changes Everything. Hey, Patty, how are hey, you? Hey, Pete. It's episode oh. three. Oh, my God. Isn't it fantastic? It is. Imagination changes everything, Pete. You know it's true. Uh, really, does it? Because, you know, I often, I love, as you know, I like to do a bit of research. And yeah. it's such a fascinating <laughs> subject when you start talking about the imagination. So what exactly is the imagination? Well, that's a very good question, Pete. So Thank the imagination, you, I, I think it is as question. you know, is the mental faculty. It's what you mock up using some innate part of yourself in order to be able to see things. So it's just this automated response that you have when your brain is daydreaming. Because many people who know you and if you don't know patty make sure you go and i mean how i found patty was i think it might be a good place to tell this story right because um i wasn't looking for patty but um you know my background is in psychology and mental imagery has always been something that i've done with a lot of athletes but i was often asking them to do something that i wasn't really doing myself but that's maybe another story but my wife was very sick a number of years ago and she was wasn't given very long to live Patty, uh, like me, we're great believers in coaching and having people that help you and mentors. So when this happened, my wife was given 18 months to live. I phoned up my coach and I asked him, he was in Dallas and I said, what should we do? He said, find people that are still alive and find out why. Great, great, uh, great thing to ask me to That's do. Right. But yeah. the next thing he, said, he actually said, ask her what she's going to do when she gets better. Now, I didn't actually hear that. I just heard him say, what is she going to do when she gets better? And then in my head, I went, did you just hear what I said? I said that she's been given 18 months. So I, what I said in my head, I said out loud. And then he said, so what? And then I was thinking, what? There you go. This is, you know, my girlfriend who's now my wife. And you're saying, so what? But then his next thing was, so what? People defy the odds all the time. So every day people defy the odds. We often believe what other people yeah. tell us. So right. I did find people that were still alive, which took, it took us on a, a, on a journey to go to Houston, Texas, where my wife was treated. Um, and uh, eight years later on, you know, she's cancer free. But the point of the story is after three or four years of making a recovery, I said to her one day, I said, Hannah, where are we going with our lives? And she started crying. And immediately, immediately I knew why she was crying, but I, I had to ask. And it was pretty obvious. She did not have a vision of her future. Her, using her imagination, her, all she could see was not dying. And often I, I would imagine that a lot of people yeah. have an imagination yeah. who have been sick like that, and they do not dream of the future. But then, Patty, I also believe that most of us don't dream of a better future. But that's how I came across Patty. I thought, well, she's not going to listen to me. I want to help her to create a compelling future. So I Googled some words. I can't even remember what the words were. And hey, presto, there's Patty giving a TED Talk. And I'm watching this thinking, wow, you can really draw your future. And since then, we've become great friends. And hence, we, and we coach each other. And now we're doing this podcast. That's how we met all through the power of the imagination. But enough. Well, of and also, too, let's just say that Hannah drew a picture of her future, which I recently just saw. And all those things in that future state are in your life right now. So that's the power of drawing something. But I think that people often feel like, they can't draw or they, you know, they don't have an imagination or they're not creative. You know, we create all these various conundrums for ourselves that are not real and based in reality, but there may be a story that we made up. But the imagination really is your capacity to be creative. It's, it's what is the spark behind your creativity. 
yeah again you know when we talk about these things it's because we can't see our imagination we can't see the the actual equipment but we know we've got this equipment and i i remember reading something recently they said that you know we don't see the world as it is we see it through our instruments so That's our right. instruments are, the, are this thing what we live in and our our brain Mind. and our body and yeah we, why do you think people struggle to use their imagination creatively because i know that you know you call yourself well tell us a little bit you know up your which i love up your creative genius what is that all about well really i my my role or my purpose in the world right now is to help people to up their creative genius because i really feel that creative genius you know it got assigned to personalities somewhere in the 50s but before that time they saw creative genius in this other way, which you and I have talked about, even maybe on this podcast. Um, but I think that part of it is that there are simple things you can do to up your creative genius. And one of them is, and I think this is what happens around imagination, is when people say, I don't have an imagination, or I can't imagine my way out of an imaginary box, you know, is that they put up these um, constraints on what it is that they actually do and they're not observant about the process that happens when they're everyday problem solving when you and I are in a conundrum of some kind let's say the traffic's bad or we're um, thinking about a relationship or a business practice or we're thinking about our bank account and we want it to change what happens is that we used our default network, which really the imagination is part of that, right? And it often takes us down a slippery slope into the things, the negative things that won't happen, that, you know, that our brain is programmed to believe. But it's our imagination that we're using. So right then, we're tapping into this sequence of pictures that we've formulated and, and our imagination, its job really is to come up with solutions for us. It just tries to imagine all the possible ways. And how does that happen? Well, it just pulls from that brain, pulls from the store of ideas that is, is housed in your hippocampus. And so in that hippocampus are all these different ideas. We've got a hippo. In our, We've in got our a hippo brain. in our head, and it's hippo huge. Campus. So what and hippo campus? Up, if you think of all the pictures going into a big <laughs> hippo, you can see how that would be big. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm now I'm oh, picturing, there, a, you know, in there. Yeah, you I'm, can pull them out of that hippo and you can mix and mash them on your prefrontal cortex on that little stage. Right. Yeah. And to find the right actor to to handle this situation. So is that quite a good way, do you think, of thinking of the, the equipment that we have that we almost have, if you like, think of it like a, a hippo where all ideas kind of come from that we because I, I see ideas as almost like a gift that somehow you've come up with an idea. And we look around us from this microphone to this computer to your glasses, your T-shirt, this house. Everything started in someone else, someone's idea. imagination. No yeah. one just thought, oh, there's a chair. We heard about those things. You know, the, you know, the fact that someone, we, we have this ability. And I yeah. suppose it's quite sad that um, we don't use the gifts we've been given. And I remember working with the England blind cricket team. And I was pretty ignorant to how blind people think because I've never, I don't know many blind people. And they're not holding the bat, you know, like the, I think you might call that in, in America with, you know, rounders. The yeah, same yeah. Thing, like holding this, this bit of wood. They're not holding it going, you know what, I just hope that today I hit the ball. Uh, the right. ball makes a sound. <laughs> And from yeah, the right. sound it makes, they, they're building up some form of visual representation of what is going right. on. And we're all doing that, right? We're yeah. all creating, and I remember my Locking up a visual representation of what it is that we want. Yeah. And I remember we're my all doing that. We're all doing it, you know, each, every day, every moment. And most of us aren't doing it particularly in a nourishing way, rather than to say it's right or it's wrong. It's like, where is this picturing taking me? And this is one of the things and, I'd, love, I'd love to explore with you, but I just Well, remember, what I want to ask you about the cricket thing is, what did you learn from that experience? Because that's fantastic. You were coaching a blind cricket team. I love that. So yes. what, what did you learn from that? <laughs> well, obviously I wasn't blind, but one thing I became very well, aware of- you might have been blind to a few things. I'm well, I was, 
Did you think? That, that is a very good point. I was very blind to what they were doing. And when they were explaining to me what they were doing, it fascinated me. I was thinking, oh, okay, blind people picture. I, I was actually, and then I said that to one of them. So you actually see, and he goes, yeah, well, of course we see. What do you think we do when we get out of bed? We know where certain things are. And it was like, oh, wow. So you have an imagination. And it was really cool because what I did with them was some, some, some work around using their other senses, heightening their senses of sound and space, which heightened their ability to see. And it, 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 it's the same whether you're blind or whether you can see. Our minds, they, they, we all do something. And this is what my coach said to me many years ago. He said to me, what is the nature of your mind? And I, I tried to give him some clever answer from <laughs> psychology that I'd studied and he laughed at me. Said, of course you did. Listen, don't be stupid. Your <laughs> mind, the nature of your mind is your yeah. mind plays tricks on you. That's what it does. Yeah, it true. plays tricks on you. And if you learn to use your mind, because your mind is a channel, if you give it something to do, it will do it for you. And most of us have just really gone to the habit of giving our minds things to do, which creates mental representations, which don't f make us feel particularly good. So we don't actually No, no. And there are things from often things from the past. So we're replaying an old record of something. But, you know, I want to ask you this question. You asked me, you know, what is the imagination? And I would ask you, what is the imagination? What is imagination? Well, I suppose at this point, it's... Uh, oh, are you we... going to ask Siri? I'm just going to see what he says. Cheater. cheater message. All right, whatever. Try that method. Uh, Do it. <laughs> Let's Go. see what he says. <laughs> what is the imagination? I'm not sure I understand. There you go. He doesn't understand because he's a computer. So maybe he doesn't really understand what it is. For me, what it yeah, is. Now, is, normally you ask him twice. So go back and ask, ask him, him again. Because the next time he'll, what he'll is answer. the imagination? Here is what I found. So he's found something is imagination is the ability to produce images, ideas, and sensations in the mind without any immediate input of the senses. Imagination helps make knowledge applicable in solving problems and is fundamental to integrating experience and the learning process. I'm not sure I understand all of that. I mean, there's probably some great truth in it. To me, in answering your question, the imagination is just this thing that you've been given to create pictures that, of, of where you want to go, of what you want to do. It's like it's such a hard thing to define. All I know is that for so many years of my life, I really didn't use it very well. And I think yeah. very few, a very few percentage of people around the world can tell you that this is where I am and this is where I'm going. I, I can see it. I can see it because I'm thinking about it. And I've I, I think, I think too, the, um, I've been uh, practicing a little bit about the imagination because I'm working on this new book, which is all about the creative genius equation. And one, the first component is imagination, of course, because that's where everything starts, you know, because imagination has the capacity to change things, but where does it come from? So this is what's fascinating to me. What happens when you actually activate your imagination on purpose? That's what you're, you're talking about. And sometimes we would do that in school. They'd say, okay, now we're going to give you three things and we want you to come up with a story based on those three things, put them together. But I think what happens if you just simply ask the universe, what am I supposed to do today? And then you wait to hear the answer from it, right? Because all the time, the universe is always imprinting you with information. Now, whether that comes from your mind and memory or your to-do list, or whether that comes from the outer sphere, right? That's the thing you want to be attuned to because you can tune your imagination to a certain channel and you can get more information at that channel if you want. Yeah. So if you're going to write a book, for example, people say, oh, I always wanted to be a writer or I feel like I've got a book. And I'm like, yeah, you do. Just tune your channel to the book and sit down with discipline and start to write every day. Don't worry about what you write about. You don't even have to have an outline because things will actually flow through you. 
using your imagination. Now, how does that happen? I don't know. I don't know how the universe works beyond this realm. I just know that out there exists a lot of information that can come right through, can funnel right through. Patty, why do you do what you do? Because I know that you're all about helping people be more creative. What is in it for people if they start to be more creative and use their imagination in more innovative ways? I think then they express their natural capability as soul, as a unit of the universe, whatever you want to call it. You know, everybody has this need to express themselves and there's no, every single person in the world is unique. They have their own unique little, I don't know, thumbprint or whatever from the universe. And so when you start to express that unique self of your own, in a creative way, whatever way you choose, whatever method that you want to bring it through, then you feel aligned with who you truly are. And when you feel aligned with who you truly are, then you feel like, oh, you know, I'm happy because I am me. I'm being me in the world. I'm doing what I'm meant to do. And I think if people really want to have that feeling, because it is, it is a wonderful feeling, I would encourage everyone to check out Patty's TED Talks. Because with those TED Talks, you're always taking people through an actual process. And what I love about those processes, is it really just lights up parts of the brain where we get excited. And, you know, for me, I never thought of the future because if people said to me, where do you want to be in five years time? I almost resented the question because I didn't yeah. know. All I knew was where I didn't want to be. And right, not right. Like a terrible childhood or anything. Like that. I was so lucky to have had the life that I had, but... I really didn't. Well, Pete, Pete, in your, in your, um, you know, in some of the writing that you've done, you talk about what interferes with your ability to be yourself and to be creative. Say a little bit about that. What do you think from your perspective that keeps people from being creative and why would they want to be creative or use their imagination? What's the value of it from your perspective? Well, they were just, they're two massive questions, Patty. I suppose the first one is this. The, is <laughs> I'll the try, try, make it simple. <laughs> well, okay, look, we've all got an imagination. We all know that. We all think in pictures, whether it's, you know, what does your front door look like? What does your best friend look like? What did you have for dinner? What are you having for dinner? The fact is you can, you know all of that because you, you make a picture of it. That's just how That's our right. brains work. But we have it's this so experience. This is why you and I are such a great, collaboration in fact even just talking about this is just making me realize why we're such a a great team in in working with people because you're amazing at helping people wake up the creative part of their brain and you're actually taking a picture of us right now i was because you were talking about taking a picture i wanted it to make the sound you know so we had a sound effect of it thank you very much well i didn't hear it but everyone could imagine what that hears like because, because we've all got that as well so we, we, we have this interference. Everyone has it. It's like you've been given this gift. Congratulations. Here's the gift. But there is a price that we all have to pay in learning to use that gift as, as best what as is the, What's the price? Just get out of your own way. Recognize that you're in your head. You're talking to yourself. And that's what most of the quality of our life comes down to. As long, you know, if you've got food on the table and you're not starving and you're not living in the streets, yeah. your life is pretty much dictated to by what you're saying to yourself and, and Patty, you raised a really interesting point before about, you know, the questions that we ask ourselves, because you ask a question, any question, your brain will give you an answer. If That's we right. ask and the answer is a picture and the picture gives a feeling. If we are, if we ask great questions, we often get great pictures and, and great, great feelings, which make us want to act. And I think, what I have noticed, and if you noticed how many times I say, I think, I think, because, you know, when we think we are engaging our imagination, it really hit me, not just with what happened with Hannah, not knowing where she wanted to go, but yeah. with myself from reading Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, who interviewed 500 yeah, people to right. try and find out what were these people's secret. They all had a burning desire. A burning desire has to be something that you see something that you are driven to move towards. And what I see in my work and including myself for so long is we're driven to move away from something rather than, and he, he said he towards something. 
yeah. rather than towards something. And when we you try to move to- away from our past, we tr- yeah. move away from poverty, we move away from bad relationships or a crummy job or a boss. And then we just get stuck. Of, that's right. Instead of creating a picture of the things that you want using your imagination and allowing mm-hmm. that to magnetize you to the future. But what's true about making any kind of change and using your imagination is that one part of you pushes you away, repels you, right? So that creates the push and the uncomfortable feeling that you have that you need to change. And the other piece creates the pull. And so that magnetic force from the push and the pull is what, if you actually take action on it, will create change, Well, right? So, Patty, you're American, aren't you? Yes, I think so. You are, and I'm British. Um, That's right. Well, and you're, American- which means that, which means what, Pete? That you're like steeped in tradition. Oh yes, we're very much steeped in tradition. You know, <laughs> we're born into leadership. And Americans, we're like, let's change our job tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My right. point is the American dream, which some people think is a nightmare, but the American dream was what Europeans did, who were told look, go to America, no taxes, and you might find some gold. It's a classic, as, as to highlight what you were saying, I would imagine yeah. a lot of people, quite a lot of poverty living in Europe, and like, let's go to America because there's a dream, there's something to work towards. And it seems that we all have this ability to dream, but like you said, a lot of us, what was driving us was we didn't like where we were, so we got comfortable, and then when we get comfortable, we settle for a life, I think, of mediocrity where we we don't reach for the stars anymore. We don't, we just kind of want to uh, fall asleep. Fall asleep, get a yeah, whole lot of I stuff think it's comfortable we, there. I think, honestly, if you ask people, they'd prefer comfort over something else, over, over the um, complexity of change. Well, and so, yes, yes. You know, and challenge yourself. I mean, that's, that's how the world is set up. You know, it's set up to make all these things you could possibly buy very appealing and they're they're surrounded by gold glitter. And so what you do is you put yourself in a situation where you can achieve those, you focus on those things instead of focusing on you and how you become that glitter, right? And I think that part of it is we forget that really the point of it is to really really turn your coal into diamond of yourself and that experiences help you do that and it doesn't mean you know don't get me wrong i think that it's great to have a glittery life but it's not the place where you will ever feel valued Mm -hmm. you know you're not going to feel valued by having the most beautiful fantastic car you might for a minute and you might in a certain circle but at the gateway you know, you're, you really need to understand that, uh, how do I work and why, why am I here and what can I do to serve the universe, right? What do you think? What do you think, well, Pete? I suppose I, I was thinking, thinking, you know, with, with so much possibility, probably more possibility, more freedom than there ever has been for people to come up with ideas and, and do so, so many amazing things. In fact, when I first heard you speak in, in face-to-face where you spoke at one of our conferences and you spoke about some of these game-changing people who came up with these incredible ideas, like the lady who came up with the oh, yeah. ability to see in the ocean when, well, not, was it the river, right? Where it, where it was toxic. and Yeah, the Hudson that, River. Yeah. Where did that idea come from? And I, yeah, I, she's an amazing person. Yeah. So, you know, she's got those things in the water where the fish can communicate with you. I can't remember her name right now, but I will uh, before we'll we'll put a link in there. When we look at great people, it's like. uh, But she's expressing her true essence of being. So she got an idea from somewhere, who knows where. And then she followed that trail. And I think that's part of it. You know, this is what I mean when I said earlier, you know, we don't know where these ideas come from. They could come from your brain, but I think they're out there. They're just out there in the universal flow, whatever that is, right? And they drop in and then your job really is to follow those little breadcrumbs 
that your imagination, your or what I would call your creative genius is dropping out there for you to pick up. And then you pick it up and you go, whoa, that is such a cool breadcrumb. That actually is going to be my idea for this new you know, movie I'm going to create. And yeah, I don't know how to create movies, but I'm going to figure it out, right? Well, or whatever it is. You have so many stories. And again, please, everyone, go and check out Patty's uh, the TED Talks. Particulars is, podcast. You've actually done three <laughs> TED Talks and I've not actually done any. So I'm a little bit envious. Of I that, know, but, but you know what, Pete? You give talks all the time to yeah, people. Yeah, but not a TED Talk. I mean, come on. I know, but I, you're, you are a walking TED Talk. So, you know. <laughs> you know, I, I, um, I would you love what, to. Go on. I was going to ask you, like, what, what would you say to people who feel like that they're stuck with their imagination? Like, what? What kind of tips would you give them? So if they're listening in right now and they're thinking, oh, I'm one of those people or I, maybe I'm not one of those people, but okay, give me an idea for what I could do to, to um, you know, jumpstart or accelerate my, my creative genius, my ideator, my imagination. Well, let's do, I want to just give a little backstory of what you were, the point that you were just making before. I do think we're living in an incredible time where we could come up with an idea right now. Like this podcast, it was an idea. It was your idea. And it was like, before we knew it, we've done it. Whereas for a lot of people to do it, they think, oh, I've got to do this. Now, I've been doing podcasts for years, so I kind of knew some of what to do. But right in the beginning, when that's I decided- why it happened overnight, really, was Pete already had known how to do it. So when he says that, let's give credit where credit is. Due. Thank you very he much. Had already done a lot of research. Okay, keep going. A, a few years before that, I had to do my first ever podcast, and I actually did it using the phone, and I did about 150 episodes. And I, what I'm trying to say here is, it was an idea, and. We are in very privileged times because we could come up with an idea. We could make something happen. And many years ago, those, those sorts of things were not possible. But the price we pay, I believe, of our ability to create things is distraction uh, and hesitation that is so easy. We could come up with an idea, that, but then you could think of a hundred million reasons as to why you couldn't do it. And the fact that it's going to yeah. be difficult, plus on top of that, that it's just so easy. Where are you going to get the time to do it? That's, I think, a lot of oh, people. Where am I going to get the time? And we doubt ourselves. And I, I think that the next time you come up with an idea, I, I would challenge anyone. And please, you know, let us know. Let us know on our, on our Facebook page, Pete and Patty's Powerful Particulars podcast. Uh, you know, let us know, you know, some of the ideas that you come up with. Because, you know, Patty and I personally would love to be a part of helping you manifest See, I remember Wayne Dyer uh, talking about this years ago in a book called You'll See It When You Believe It. That's right. When you see something in your imagination, I never forget reading this when he said, well, it already exists. You've created it once. Now you just have to create it again. But it it was already there. And I suppose, Patty, the easiest thing to do, easiest thing to do is also the easy thing not to do, that when you come up with an idea, just write it down and think, what's one thing that I could do right now to bring this idea yeah, to, to make life, it happen. to breathe yeah, life to into it. it? Yeah, yeah, so, I think that, so, uh, but I also think too that for people that are, um, you know, listening in and you're wondering, like, I just, my imagination feels so stale. So, um, you know, you can get a stack of three by five cards And you can write just random words on one per card and you can lay it out on your table and you can put them all face down and then randomly grab two of them and put them together and let your imagination come up with what that means, those Mm -hmm. two cards together, like cat and boat. What have you got? I don't know. But, you know, for you, just all we're doing is stimulating your imagination. Yes. That's what you want is you want to give your imagination some free reign every day not to take you down the slippery slope into the things you don't want, I, yeah, but to take you into the slope, mm. the climb uh, to the place that you want to exist and be. And even if that goal is for you just to learn to be in the present moment, that takes your imagination. And so what does it mean to be in the present moment? What does it mean to be fully alive, listening to someone or something or looking fully? Um, When, um, you know, when I first started to draw, I saw a guy draw in a meeting 
and he drew a picture of what we were talking about. And I thought, oh my God, that guy's making so much money drawing pictures and he's having such a good time. I want to be him, you know, but I wasn't an artist. I mean, you know, the last time I'd drawn was when I was five and here I was like 20, no, I was 32. And I thought, I can't, well, how will I do that? You know, and I was like, I didn't even think about it. I just went home immediately and started to draw. The next week I was asked to capture on flip charts, you know, in a meeting. Can you just be a scribe in the meeting? And I'm like, are you okay if I draw pictures while I'm doing that? I'm, well, sure, <laughs> why not, you know? So then I drew pictures and everybody in the room, and I thought, I, I would just really, honestly, I was drawing stick figures and things that I remember from when I was five, like the sun and houses and trees, and they all looked just like a five-year-old, but nobody cared. What they cared about was it was colorful and it was drawing. And then the reason I'm telling you this is the way that I became a good artist is that I began to observe what things actually looked like. I would look at a candlestick and I would see what the nuance of shadow in was it. And then I try to replicate it on a page. I'd look at how a plant was. So to me, that was learning to be with the present moment. In, in a whole new way. And then letting my imagination tell me, how would you draw that? Well, try, just try. And then I would draw it again and again and again until I became very finessed at drawing that one plant or that one candlestick. And I think that, you know, your my imagination gave me the tip, right? To yeah. do it that way. And then it also helped me to envision that on paper right? So when you're thinking about your goal and you see it in your mind, you see it in a picture. There you are. You don't see it as the bad cartoon that you draw. You see it as you in the thing with the wife, with the beach, with the cancer-free, with the full healthy life. And then what you want to do is just transfer that to the page. And you can use a word or a picture. It doesn't matter because yeah, your imagination will has the picture. Pictures and colors, they do make a huge difference. And you know, as, I, as I'm talking to you now, I'm looking up above my head and I just see, you know, a massive picture that you did for me based on, you know, my current reality where I am and my desired reality. But what I love about your work and, you know, if you look at the science around this, uh, Gabriel Otengin, who's probably yeah. one of the most well-known people in this field of positive visualization you know, where the, the film, The Secret, which a lot of people enjoyed, you know, about manifesting your future. I think one of the things which is fundamentally missing from that is the bold steps that have to be taken in order for you to, you're not just going to sit there. I don't think, I personally don't think that you can just sit there, dream of your future and then not do anything. You, you have. Well, to I don't know. You know, I mean, that is a doing thing right? And so yes. there are some people in the world that actually believe that you don't have to. And a person came up to me after a conference and said that to me. He said, you don't even have to do the bold step. But, you know, I, I think that mm. we're dealing with the mind and the mind is going to just derail itself at every opportunity. So were you telling me Michelangelo yeah. when he decided to... You yeah, know, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He, he just, just needed to envision it. it. And it then, he didn't have or to go Beethoven or any of these... <laughs> But I, right, I, think that, right. I think that is such a great point, and maybe we could do a, another podcast on this. In fact, I'd love to do a podcast on Mars. Well, I think we should do an experiment on it, actually. Like, we should set a goal, and we should see if we just envision the goal, whether it actually comes to be, or if what we do every day in taking small actions to make change happen actually help to activate. Okay, all right. It's all right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's. I'm going to throw something out there, but you. Okay, I'm you. ready. I'm ready. I so, love it. Um, why don't we decide that Pete and Patty's powerful particulars podcast will become one of the most popular podcasts in the world? All right, I'm okay. I'm in. So we're just going to envision that. But the truth is, we're already acting on that. Yeah. So we're we're activating that so we'll just see if we can accelerate it with the envisioning piece of it with the imaginatory faculty how about that uh, well, that's what i'm going to start well and doing. not just that but i well, let's ask all of our listeners to imagine that too with us because that'll happen, help help it happen even faster yeah and there's something awesome that happens isn't there when everyone gets behind something where everyone envisages envisages it i remember working with a 
with a woman who's and then her name was Ellen MacArthur, and she sailed around the world on her own. Yes. Um, and I, I told her and her family, let's all get together and let's all visualize you being safe and visualize, uh, you know, everything just working out for you. I mean, even studies which have been done on the power of prayer, you know, and the power right, of, of course, meditation. that's what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, the, the transcendental meditators who meditated in a state in America and brought the crime rate down and then they left and the crime rate went up. And <laughs> I mean, whether you believe in this stuff you or not. You have to be consistent with things, you know, otherwise well, it's going to go awry. I that's think, right. and I think, it would be brilliant to, to do something or do a podcast on mastery because that's the challenge, right? For all of us to yeah. be disciplined enough to stick to things I in a it. world where so much possibility, but so much distraction. What I would love to be the, the legacy of this podcast is for people who out there to dare to tell us something that they want to manifest in their life to watch yes. uh, Patty's podcast, Patty's um, Ted talks or buy her book, which Patty, let's talk about your book in a second and dare dare to work towards something that you can see in your mind. And I'll tell you, there was an athlete who I worked with and go and Google her. Her name's Sally Gunnell, 1992, won gold in uh, Barcelona in the Olympics. And next year broke the world record, 1993. And uh, she worked with I worked with her at, when she started speaking, but when she was an athlete, there was another athlete in 1968, David Hemery, because you never yes. have to reinvent the wheel. You know, if you want to ask, no, you go don't. find someone who's done what you want to do and ask them some questions. You can learn from them. And he said to her, Sally, if you want to win gold in Barcelona, you better visualize this race whenever you can. You know, just think about it, see it, hear it, feel it, go into the stadium, see yourself winning over and over and over again. And in fact, prior to that, she would visualize sometimes, but she wouldn't always visualize herself winning. Winning. Sometimes yeah, that's key herself- because Marilyn King, who was a decathlete, t- tells this story about how she trained for it. She broke, she, she injured her back, broke her back, and then she wanted to re-enter it. And all she did was play movies of herself until she went to the trials. And then she did the trials. Uh-huh. She couldn't train for it. And then she was able to get in. Wow. But what she didn't do was she could envision herself going into the Olympic arena, but she didn't envision herself winning. And so when she went to do the long jump, she broke her ankle. It, it, yeah, and, and so she got there, but she couldn't finish that. And that's what she talks about is how important it is to have the finishing piece in place. Well, make sure you go and Google Sally Gunnell, 1993, uh, because when she broke the world record the following year in the world championships, she crossed the line. She didn't even know that she had crossed the line and she didn't know that she'd won. She didn't know, she knew she crossed the line, but she didn't know she'd won and she didn't know that she'd broken the world record. And there are countless examples of of people, thousands of people. Yeah, most of them get are athletes, but I think there are just so many you know, I get stories all the time of people who set a goal so and then on, it, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's so, all, all right. start using let's our imagination. Yeah, yeah. And so what would be great is let's have people send in to our Facebook page, a goal that they have. And then as we go through the year, we can check back in with people to see let's like do it. Tick, do when it. the box tech, when the box got ticked. When I'm fired group. up. I'm fired up. And I, and I think what I we'll know, do is let, I have a, a tool that we'll share in the Facebook group. It's called priming. We'll put it in there for free. It's a tool where you can start to positive visualize, you know, where you want to go and start to make it seem real. Uh, yeah. We'll yeah. And there. also too, we should put in there that template that draw your future template. So if you want to draw a picture, we'll put that in there too. We can even and put that. We can even put the, the talk talk there. there. Yeah. Um, the the other thing I was going to say, Pete, is you said earlier that something about you wanted the next thing to be about mastery, and I think that should be our next our next podcast is about mastery because I think people really need to understand that. What is yes. it to create a state of mastery? Yeah, and, and I, it's something which is almost frowned upon in society today. People think you're a bit weird when you decide to decide to stick at something and get better. But with our support, I think anything is possible. 
Uh, we appreciate all of you. Patty, tell us about your book that I know that you have oh, just... Yeah, it's, yeah this book show is us, called show uh, us. Nine, Nine oh. Tips to Up Your Creative Genius. It's this cute little book. And honestly, it's not a heavy read. There's not a lot of science in here. These are just nine simple tips like tap deeply into creative genius or um, another one is what goes around comes around. You know, and it's just a tip and then an idea for you to take and try on your own. So if you're just in the morning, you want to randomly open it and just get yourself a tip to try, that's what it's for. And I'm right. sure this is volume one, so I'm sure we're going to have a whole series, and I can't wait to see what we can bust. Where, where do we get it from? You can get it on Amazon. Um, it's right there, Amazon. Or you can do get it on the website. We've got bundles on the website and stuff, but... Yes. I'll make sure we'll put it all in the we'll put it all in the show notes. And uh, listen, guys, we uh, we appreciate you. Uh, we I love think, you. I think we love you. We actually love you. And I think this is a, a we will do more on on using your imagination. As much as Patty and I are talking to each other, we're only here for one reason: to have fun you. and to maybe inspire you to go out and be creative, be an inspirator, be the very best that you can be. If you've enjoyed this podcast, leave us a comment. If you're listening to this on our Facebook page, if you're listening to this on wherever you're listening to it, iTunes, leave a comment, share it. Let's get this out there in the world. Patty, you are phenomenal. You too, Pete. Thanks so much. It was so much fun. This, and thank you to everybody listening in. Thank you. This has been Pete and Patty's Powerfuls and Particulars podcast. And join us next time where we will do a podcast all about mastery. It's a goodbye from me. And goodbye it's a good from bye, me. And it's a goodbye from Patty. Goodbye. <laughs>